This is Bustin' Loose in Faith with Apostle Tebow and Prophet Tebow. This broadcast airs every Friday on My Gospel Soul at 12 p.m. Central Time. Bustin' Loose in Faith is a seed of faith evangelistic outreach ministry. We come to bring you words, praise, and inspiration. We want you to remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with God, all things are possible. Make sure you share this show at 347-826-9424. Bustin' Loose and Faith Ministries would love to hear from you. Now, let's get into our broadcast with none other than Apostle Dudley Tebo and Prophet Lisa Tebo, right here on My Gospel Soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good and worthy to be praised on praise on glory. All honor belongs to him this day and forevermore. Oh, precious fathers, we're approaching the throne of grace. We're coming to humble ourselves under thy mighty hand tonight. Just a thank you and a praising you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. Just a thank you and a praising you for who you are, that you are God. And besides thee, there is no other than worship in spirit and in truth. Now, precious fathers, we get out of the way that you may have no way here tonight. Have me behind Calvary's cross, and Lord, this is a place. Use me, Father God, for thy glory. Prepare the people's heart to see thy word in spirit and in truth. We bind up all technical difficulties, anything that will try to hinder the word of God from going forth. And, Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have your Bible, I'd like you to open up to the book of Hebrew, the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verses 1 and, and 2. And also, we'll be looking at 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. In the Word of God, it says in Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, God, who at sunrise time, in many portions and in many ways spake, in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the world. In Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says, who had saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and to the doers of his holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, As we come to you today, we are thankful and grateful to be able to to be able to uh, uplift that name that's above every other name, and that is the name of Jesus. We are thankful through the use of the internet that we are able to preach and teach on a local level and be able to reach on a global level. So we ask that you pray for us and with us as we pray for you all also uh, here in 2022. Beloved, as a born-again believer, we are on a journey with Christ. Just for the next few minutes, I want to talk about God is calling you to partner with him. In 2022, God is calling you to partner with him in 2022. 
Beloved, as a born again believer, you are on a journey with Christ, looking to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Along the way on this journey, God will call you again and again into a deeper relationship with him. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we as Christians are called to deeper knowledge and love of the Lord. As believers of Christ, God wants a relationship with all of his children. He wants to be the number one person we come to when we run into problems or when we are scared or need someone to talk to. Beloved, God gives us the tools we need to reach out to him and to create that type of dialogue. God is calling you as his child to partner with him. Yes, beloved, the word of God says, that God is calling us to partner with him as believers of Christ. In the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8, it says, I delight to do your will, oh my God, and your law is within my heart. The scripture says in Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 10, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, does any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Yes, God's grace is a gift that has been given to every believer of Christ for salvation. You see, it's not about ourselves. It is a gift of God. It's not a works on our part that any man or woman should vote. But we have to understand, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus onto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Even from the beginning of the world, God has ordained our Life. He has preordained for and instruct us to walk in the things that He has created us for. God is calling us to partner with Him in 2022 for the spread of the gospel. He has called us for such a time as this, even in a pandemic. God is still calling. He's calling people to himself. Beloved, there are two privileges that God has given to man. And the first is salvation, which is a privilege to enter into an intimate and eternal relationship with God and to be unified with him in love. And the second greatest privilege is to serve God with good works, which he prepared through us as we allow him to do so. You see, both of these privileges are a result of God's grace. Grace, unmerited favor of God. Matthew 5, verse 16 says, 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. People of God, what we believe in is what we live in. And the perspective, the point of view you see from it. I'm going to say that again. Believers of Christ, what we believe in is what we live in. And the point of view we see from here in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, the word of God says, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one coming to the Father except through me. Believers, as a believer of Christ, when you believe in Jesus and his word, you see from his point of view or our perspective. Beloved, God is calling for us to be to partner with him. As a believer of Christ, here we see in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped or crept upon the earth. When we go a little further in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 15, and the Lord God took the man, the man Adam, and put him inside the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Even though God, our God, has created the human being to be like him. You are, you see, God is a visionary. He is a creator. He's one who speaks with authority and who manifests his dream, his vision. God is a ruler, and he reigns over the entire universe. So we as believers of Christ, he has given us the ability to bring into his existence by being led of his Holy Spirit. You see, believer of Christ, when God calls call man or woman. We must respond. You see, beloved, you must respond by your heart and hear his call. Because the day may come when your heart can no longer feel the touch of God nor hear his call. That's why the Bible says, heart not your heart. In the day of in, in the day of when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Because it may come to time we will not be able to hear his voice. We may not be able to fellowship one with another. We may not be able to find the word of God, a Bible. To read it. That's why we have to study to show that self approval unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why we have to spend time in prayer in our secret closet talking to God. Talking and listening 
to instill small voice. Speaking to our spirit man. You see, God, he desires for us to have that intimate time one-on-one. He desires that each and every one of us, as his children, set aside a time to listen to his word, to listen to his instruction, to listen and to do what he has commanded us to do. See, the word of God says in 1 Samuel 15, 22, because of the verse, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fed of rain. So we must pray. And listen. In other words, we pray to God. God will respond to us. We must be get still, quiet and still before Him, humbling ourselves underneath His mighty hand in His presence, and let the Spirit of the Lord speak to our heart. And gives us the instruction on what to do. Once we get the instruction, we can't can't just be a hearer of the word, but we got to be a doer of the word of God. And once we hear the instruction personally or collectively, we must respond immediately. Don't put it off. Because the enemy... The devil, he will come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. See, the word of God says in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, that the enemy goes as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. You see, our mind has to be made up. Our heart has to be fixed. That the world is behind us and the cross is before. My brothers and sisters in Christ, tonight we are talking about God is still calling. And he wants to, he's calling you and I to partner with him. He's calling you and I as believers of Christ to a deeper relationship, intimate relationship with him to deeper knowledge of his word. Hallelujah. To move forth with reverence, with God is feared before him. We know that 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, for he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. When we have that God is fear within us, Our heart desire is to please God in everything that we say and do according to his perfect will for our lives. We are willing and obedient to align ourselves with God's will for our lives. To go about doing his agenda and putting our agenda to the side. To go forward and being selfless instead of selfish, concerned about me, myself, and I. No, God wants us to reach out to those that are less fortunate than us. Those that, that are in the world that has no hope. But we as believers of Christ have a hope within us to let people know that God is still in the miracle working business. God is still calling. But the call comes through his son in 2022. Yes, in the beginning and during the Old Testament time, God will call individually. He would, send, he would speak through prophets. And they would bring forth a word to the one that God directs them to. 
But in the in the old in the New Testament, Jesus came to fulfill the old and to bring forth the new. Jesus is a total fulfillment of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. So in him, we look to as the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So people of God, we must do things in order. Things that, that, that you see, God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of single-mindedness. God says what he means, and he means what he says. So, beloved, when we hear the voice of God speaking, beloved, we must respond while our heart can hear his call. Because, again, the day may come when your heart, my heart, can no longer feel the touch of God, nor hear his call. So, child of God, the conviction in your heart is God's way of telling you that today is the time for your decision to be made. There is no reason for delay. Remember what I said in the beginning? Harden not your heart in a day of pre-vocation. In the day that you hear the word of God. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that God is speaking to you. Don't put off today for tomorrow. Because today is a day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to us. When we hear his voice, harden not your heart. Respond to it with joy. Consider what what is being said. And be obedient to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Yes, beloved God is calling you to be partnered with him in 2022. People of God, God is inviting you into a relationship with him. You see, it is a relationship based on faith. And trust in Jesus Christ. Now we know that Hebrews 11 and 1 says that now it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We also know, according to Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. But them that come to God must believe that He is who He says He is, and He is the reward of them that diligently seek Him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I stopped by tonight to let you know that it is a relationship based on the work of salvation done by Jesus Christ and not ourselves. You see, Jesus says, says in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, it says, and as Jesus passed forth from then, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax office. And he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed Jesus. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at me in the house. Behold, many publicans are tax collectors. And sinners came and sat down with him and his, and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto Jesus' disciples, Why eateth your master with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said unto them, the Pharisees, they that are well 
home need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners to repent. You see, Jesus called us all to be his disciples, to be with him, and to hear his word, and to learn from him, because he is the master teacher. He is Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings. He is the beloved son of God. The love of God is calling you as his child to partner with him. You see, when God calls, he calls ordinary people. He calls the ones who feel they are inadequate. Believers of Christ, a key to a key to developing our relationship with God is to get involved in His work and to attempt things that can only be done with His help. You see, ministry is about people. Ministry is about God's agenda. Ministry is about reaching out to those that are in need. So this is how we come to know him, to know him in a greater way. In order to know somebody, you have to spend time with them. In order to develop a close relationship, you are involved with them on a daily basis. You see, a question may be asked, how often does God call? Beloved, God has called us daily, and he has called us all day long. God is still calling in 2022. Question is, will you answer the call? I'm not talking about your mother. Your father, grandmother, grandmother, grandfather, your aunt, your uncle, your brothers, or your sister, your niece or nephew, or your cousin. No, will you answer the call? You see, all of us, we're the same one saying, we'll all have to bow one day. But the Bible says, all. Oh, shall bow at the name of Jesus. So it is better in 2022 to take heed to the call of God on your life. Yes, my loving God has called you into a deeper relationship with Jesus, the author, and finish of our faith. People of God, one of the most Difficult thing for human beings to do. It is to change. As believers of Christ, to find meaningful change in our lives. We need God to direct us so that we can walk through life with his purpose. Yes, beloved, God is calling us to partner with him. In 2022. 20, yes, he is calling. He still sits high, but he looks low. He's still calling us by name because he know the very hair on our head. God is still calling. He's still calling. He wants to call you as his child to partner with him in 2022. I hear you talking about what Jesus did for you. Spread your gospel, but is it the truth? Judging people high and low out of self-righteousness. Jesus said, don't judge no one. 
with your stuff is a mess. Live for real. It doesn't change in your life. You need to live for real. Live for real. Live for real. Live for real. It doesn't change in your life. You need to live for real. Live for real. You're always on the phone with other itchy ears. Telling folks. Business while yours is in the clear. My God, he sits high and he looks low. You'll see more blessings when you hang up the phone. Live for real. Live for real. It doesn't change in your life. You need to live for real. Live for real. Live for real. Live for real. It doesn't change in your life. You need to live for real. Live for real. I hear you talk about what Jesus did for you. Live for real. Spreading your gospel, but is it the truth? Change in your life, you need to live for real. Live it for real. Live for real. It doesn't change in your life, you need to live for real. Live it for real. Live for real. It doesn't change in your life, you need to live for real. Live for real. If there's a change in your life, you need to live for real. Live it for real.
we in a brand new year of uncertainty. A year where every time we turn around, something has happened. Remember that trouble will come, but trouble won't last always. There'll be seasons of mountaintops experience, seasons of valley in our journey with the Lord. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible says that we abide in him, and he abide in us. Talking about Jesus. He is the vine, and we are the branches. If we abide in the true vine, if we abide in Jesus, him and his father will come and make a boat or make home in our lives. So brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible says that in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, we must walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In 2022, people of God, don't just drift around spiritually and even physically. Don't aimlessly walk through life. Walk through life with a purpose in mind. As believers of Christ, Make sure that believer of Christ, make sure that you walk with position, precision and calculate movement. You see, people of God in 2022, again, we are living in a dark and sinful world where people, even God's people, is talking to and hearing lies and are in deception and being deceived. So we have to pay attention in 2022. And we as God's children must stay focused on what we are doing. We have to walk as children of life. You see, as children of light, we walk by having purpose and in direction, having purpose and direction in our lives. And we make sure that God's purpose and directions become our purpose and our direction. So, beloved, it it is all about how we as God's people how we live life. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 14, verse 15, the simple believe it every word, but the prudent man look it well to his own. Again, beloved, those God is, God is calling, must live and walk with purpose and with Position. Believe of Christ, if you are very serious about change in 2022, you have to make you have to make God the center and goal of the process of your life. You have to believe Him and start doing what He said. Redeeming the time and spending your time with him wisely. You see, people of God, when we look at the world around us, again, here in 2022, the troubles, the tragedy, the calamity, the chaos, the heartache, 
we see it would be very hard to argue the point with with what the Apostle Paul is saying. That these days that we are living in are evil. It is a simple fact of life that here in 2022 we are living in an evil world. All you have to do, for example, is is to turn on the news and you'll see all the terrible things that are taking place, that are going on. Beloved, we are to make wise and sacred use of every opportunity for doing good. As God's people, we have been called out to come out from among them, says the Lord. Be ye my sons and daughters, and I will be your God. And come and sup with you. Yes, we have the ability, brothers and sisters in Christ, to make wise choices with our time and to dedicate it to a sacred purpose. So use your time wisely for the Lord. Again, God is calling us to partner with him in 2022. Believers of Christ, when we redeem the time, we make a commitment that we are not going to give up on the precious time that we have to spend with God in preparation, in prayer, and in Bible study. We have to play God as number one priority in our lives on a daily basis. So the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, beloved, when we when we change in order to align our values with God's values, we start redeeming our time and dedicating our time to the sacred purpose of developing a close relationship with God. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse 17, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. People of God, the will of the Lord is like our roadmap for life. It is what shows us how to navigate our way through life. Purposefully. And the will of the Lord tells us where we are going and how to get there. Believe us in Christ. We must be faithful to the gospel way and stay focused looking on to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. We must not wander off. And we must also seek God's grace on a daily basis. See, the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by faith. If we focus our attention on God, then our spiritual uh, sensitive will grow greater. God is calling.
He's calling us to partnership with him. He's calling us because of everything that he has instructed us to do. For the deposit that he has placed within our lives. The investment of his Holy Spirit in us. He desired he desire to use us for such a time as this. Again, we are reminded in the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, that God who at sunrise times are many in many portions and in many ways spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. But now, in these days, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who he has appointed heirs of all things. Yet God has appointed Jesus, as heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God is calling us to partnership with him. He's calling us to a deeper walk, deeper knowledge, deeper time in prayer. The word of God. Also in Second Timothy one and seven, one and one verse nine, who has called us and saved us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world. Begin. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have to understand as a born again believer. We are on a journey with Jesus. He is our set example. He is the trailblazer. He is the one that finished his course. And he left us the flame, the example for us to follow. As followers of Christ, we must take up our cross daily. And we must follow the instruction, the word of God, that leads God and direct us by his Holy Spirit. You see, the God that we serve is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Remember along the way on this Christian journey, God will call you over and over again into going deeper with him to build a a deeper, greater relationship now than than ever before. Yes, we are, we as Christians, believers of Christ, we are called to go deeper, deeper in ministry, deeper in prayer, deeper in fellowship with God the Father. Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all agree as one. God promised us in his word in Hebrew 13, verse 8, the B clause of the verse, that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. Jesus said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. 
So as believers of Christ, God wants a relationship with all of his followers, with all of his children. He wants to be the number one person in our lives. You see, when we come to where we run into problems or when we are in need of something or need someone to talk to, his line is never busy. We can get in our secret closet and speak to him and wait and God will speak back to us. So beloved, God gives us all the necessary tools we need to reach out to him and to create that type of dialogue with him. God is calling us to partnership with him in 20. 22. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as I bring this teaching to a conclusion, I want you to know that in 2022, there may be one or there may be some underneath the sound of my voice that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. This is the time to really consider what is being said here today, tonight. Not just take the words that you hear, taking them lightly. No, God is still speaking. He's still saving. He's still healing. He's still he's still moving in twenty twenty two. God is still believing all mankind to come to him and no one go to the devil's hell. But we must all make that choice. Whether to accept or reject the gift of salvation that he promised to us. We have to remember brothers and sisters in Christ that everything we get from God is by faith. And we must ask the Lord by faith. Once we get on the right path to help keep us, we must ask him for the grace, his grace, in order to keep us when temptation comes. I'm reminded when, when, when Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, I am praying for you. Because the enemy, the devil, he desired to sift you as we. So we have an intercessor. His name is Jesus, who ascended on high, sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us as believers of Christ. So with God on our side, Jesus on our side, the Holy Spirit, all three agrees as one. But you must ask a sinner, man or woman, bar or girl, you must come to that place in life to where you, you recognize that you need help on a spiritual basis. Recognize that your life is out of order and you want to get it back in order. See, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If that's you tonight, don't put off today for tomorrow. You have no excuse. Don't harden your heart. Come to him. Just the way you are. Tore up from the floor. Bible says in Romans 10, verse 13, for whosoever shall
shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. He's just, he's just simply acknowledging the fact that I'm a sinner. And I'm ready to repent of my sin. Humble yourself underneath God's mighty hand. Come to him from bending knees and bow down to him. Let him know how sorry you are for the sins that you have committed. And if you're open and honest about it, God will accept you in the beloved family of God. It's just simply coming to a place of making the confession and a belief. Because the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. You believe unto righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And in faith and through faith, God would welcome you, welcome you in, the beloved family of God that you have been drafted into his family. He loves you. He loves you with a love that is beyond comprehension. A love that passes all our understanding. That's the type of God that we say. Remember, brothers and sisters, in prayer that God is calling, calling us to partner with him in 2022. God bless you and God keep you. Amen and amen. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can write us. At Dudley Tebow or Lisa Tebow at P.O. Box 92864, Lafayette, Louisiana, 7051. Again, you can reach Dudley Tebow or Lisa Tebow at P.O. Box 92864, Lafayette, Louisiana, 7059. Have a blessed, safe, enjoyable evening. God's willing, Jesus Terry. We'll meet again on Friday night at 6 p.m. God bless. Have a blessed night.